Sheikh Amar, I'm going to ask you a question that's honestly like I've, I've faced a situation where I've been um, asked to get involved in certain causes um, that, in, that are in opposition to my faith. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm not very comfortable with it. And I, I keep thinking of the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ says, Al-halal ubayyan, haram ubayyan. You know, that, that the halal is very clear and the haram is very clear. And in between is the gray areas. And whoever falls into the gray areas falls into haram. Right. So I get that there are, like, we need to be on the front lines of, of fighting injustice. Yeah. Um, but living in Western contexts, um, the front lines of injustice, uh, I'm being told, are certain things that are against my faith. Right. Um, and it's, uh, for example, the, the, the LGBT issue. And I want to get into that. But right. in general, where do I draw the line? Like, yeah. how do I interact with causes that I feel are not in uh, alignment with my faith? Yeah, yeah. No, Zakallah here. So, um, you know, I think, by the way, the first advice when someone asks me, what's your first advice to activists? I say to them that the haram can never become halal. You cannot make the haram halal. Uh, because what is haram by the Quran, by the sin of the Prophet ﷺ, or with the ijma' or with the consensus of the scholars is haram, period. And so you cannot um, make the haram halal, you cannot champion the haram, you cannot support haram. There is absolutely no way that we should allow the shaitan to fool us into thinking that it ever becomes okay to advocate for or to champion what is in opposition to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, or the consensus of our uh, our scholars over time. So that's one thing that's very important. And I think that's why uh, the word activism becomes such a loaded term, because when people think activism, they immediately take on you know a, a, a host of issues and they think that they are you know um, all inextricable. They think that none of them can be can be separated from one another. So they're all the same. And the reality is, is that as Muslims, we should be very clear about what we are advocating for. And so if I'm at an anti-war protest, um, and you know, I'll tell you that uh, for me, the anti-militarism spaces are, are the strangest spaces because uh, who usually is the most consistent when it comes to the anti-war stuff? I don't know if it's the same thing in Australia, but it's people that are just straight up hippies, right? Like, and I don't say that in a derogatory for- form, but it's people that um, that will that will be involved in you know the anti-war throughout democratic and republican establishments they're just always there and sometimes they advocate for all sorts of things but you know what right now we're here because we're against the war in Iraq classical example um, you know large protests some of the largest protests in the world happened uh, when the war of Iraq started unfortunately the war of Iraq still happened. And, um, you know, many innocent people were killed and the devastation uh, is still there. But the largest protests in the world that came after the war on Iraq uh, to try to stop the war on Iraq. So when you go to anti-war protests, you know, it's like, okay, all of these different people are here and it's this huge coalition and this huge group of people. And there are all sorts of things. But right now, look, we're here because we're opposed to the war on Iraq. We're here for Palestinian rights. That's why everybody's here right now, right? Um, the same thing could be true, um, you know, when it comes to the migrant uh, issue here. SubhanAllah, there was a time when family separation first started happening um, in the United States. Uh, treatment of, of, of migrants at the border has been horrible um, under Obama, under Trump, and still under Biden. But there was family separation where, um, you know, uh, in punitive measures, they were taking the parents away from the children. We actually had situations here in Dallas where children were on the plane and they were writing notes to other passengers, please help me find my mom. It was heartbreaking, right? Like the separation of children from their parents. And that was my first time going to the border over and over and over again. I went to uh, you know, the border from, from Texas, McAllen, uh, Juarez, uh, San Diego, Tijuana. We went to San, the San Diego border right after there was tear gassing of the people on the other side. And it's like border protest to border protest because of the treatment of people at the border. And some of the protests were definitely um, strange. There were all sorts of things that were uh, coming about sort of in real time. And 
I think for us, it's important to keep reminding ourselves, like, look, we, we have to advocate for righteous causes and righteous causes only. And we have to be very careful to not let the righteous causes veer into starting to advocate for things that are not righteous causes that are not found in the Quran and the sin of the Prophet Sallallahu Anytime there's the killing of an innocent person, um, you know, which happens often, you know, maybe at the hands of police, for example, anti-police brutality protests, things of that sort, it, it gets grave very quick because protests, the, the whole protest scene is very um, fluid and, um, you know, things just, just happen, right? Uh, on the spot. It's very hard to organize that. Um, but as Muslims, it's important for us to keep on getting back to, okay, what are we here for? And we don't take on causes that are not from our deen, not from our tradition. We have to constantly sort of insist upon that, that we're here for these particular issues. And this is what we advocate for. And we never advocate for haram um, in the process. And we make that clear. Uh, that uh, we we don't advocate for haram and that, you know, while other partners have different motivations, for example, while they're at some of these different issues, maybe they're driven to the table for different reasons. And they also are at other tables and maybe even on opposite, opposite ends of us on certain issues, right? Uh, right now we're here for this issue and that's the issue we're all going to work on, but we might be on a, a opposite sides on other issues. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, I I should not be expected to advocate for something that is against my principles, against my conscience. Um, and that should not be a litmus test for me to be productive in society or serve the poor and serve the marginalized and the oppressed. No, like we can do that and we can be true to our Islam and in fact, act out of our Islam. And I think it's important for us to keep on insisting upon that and to not uh, to not lose ourselves in that.